We thank the Lord for his blessings because when the Lord touch you, you're never the same. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Today I want to just talk from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And I thank God for the message because he has given us truth to live by. And attitude is everything. And the Lord has an attitude concerning his church. You know, despite of what we see wrong with the church, the Lord looks at the church with his favor. He said in John 3 that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What is the church? The church are many people who have become members of the body of Christ. I wish I had a member here today. And I'm not ashamed to be a part of Christ's body. And so we want to look in the fifth chapter uh, Ephesians and at this part of the fifth chapter uh, it summarizes the husband and wife relationship however it mirrors something that is much bigger and that is Christ and the church so in the fifth chapter we're going to look down at verse 22 and we're going to go down to verse 31 Father, we ask your blessings on your word. We thank you for today, and we thank you for everything you have done for us. We love you. We honor you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless in this same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself after all no one ever hated their own body, but they fed and cared for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. Hallelujah. And so today we want to talk about the attitude of Jesus toward the church. The attitude of Jesus toward the church. First of all, Jesus is connected with the church. Can y'all say that? Connected. He's connected with the church. In the book of Zechariah in the Old Testament, verse 9, Verse 16 of the, the ninth chapter, Zechariah 9, 16, it says, The Lord their God will save his people on that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his hand like jewels in a crown. And I thank God that I represent the Lord as his jewel. He's coming back, not for this building, but for his precious jewels. And so the Lord connects with the church. I'm so thankful for Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, Jesus is better than everything. 
Drugs couldn't do it. Sex couldn't do it. You know, my own ego couldn't do it. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. And he connects with the church. We see here in this scripture that the Lord, he's going to display his dominion worldwide. Everybody's going to see it. And the coming king, Jesus, he's coming to deliver us, to save us from this, this uh, nature of ours that we have. Because sometimes we don't do what we're supposed to do. And not only the, the, the battle within, but the battle without. Sometimes we are provoked, others provoke us, situations provoke us. But the Lord, he's coming to deliver us and to save us from our sins. There's two things I want to talk about. I'm going to make it three. Three things I want to talk about, about Jesus connecting with the church. First of all, Jesus is the head of the church. He's the head of the church. Just like we see here in the fifth chapter, that wives are to yield to the husband's authority. The husband is in a position that is to be honored. Somebody know what I'm talking about. I always tell me in a counseling, if I marry you, I'm, I'm putting you in a leadership position. You're no longer a boo thing. you no longer, that's my dude. You are a husband. And a husband is special in the eyesight of the Lord. It's a position of authority given by God. To be honored. Also, he's the savior of the body. And this is something that we must look at. Even as husbands, biblical leadership means being responsible. Amen. When you get to be the head of the household, you have a responsibility to tend your household with a delicate hand. I'm preaching now, y'all. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, and, and he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Jesus is a deliverer. He paid the price for our sin. And so as husbands, and I thank God I'm a husband, as husbands we have a responsibility yeah. in being a leader. And being a husband. Also, Jesus is connected with the church because he's the husband of the bride. And this is good here. When you think about being the husband of the bride, the kingdom husband, he outserves his wife. The king, I'm talking about the kingdom husband. In verse 28 of that. Fifth chapter of Ephesians, it says, Other love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This is this is this is right here called sacrificial. This is a sacrificial love. When you start talking about you love, well, baby, I came home, but I'm like, no. Love is also I came home and I saw what was on your mind. I ain't got a woman in here to say, man, I got one there. There go one. And so he gave himself up. When he, when he was manhandled in that garden and he was stripped of his clothes and stripped of his beard, most of us, I should probably would have backslid. You just stacked on my shirt I had made and then ripped it, you know, I forgot my body. But he gave himself up. He was willing to lay down his life for his bride. And that's the way you and I as, as husbands, I talk to you men, and you future husbands here, that's how we are to be. We are the, not only the head uh, and the, sav the savior, meaning the, being responsible, but we serve, we outserve our wives. Why is this? Why would I do that? A lot of times in relationships, marital relationships, we, we want to receive. You know, it's just like going out to the Texas uh, 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 Roadhouse. You want them to bring you some lemon, lemonade, ice cold. You're not going to go get them no lemonade. 
You want to be served. And so most people in relationships, they have things they want. But the goal is to facilitate transformation through the influence of love. When you're able to fa fa facilitate this transforming love, it makes the, all the difference in a marriage relationship. And this is what the Lord did. He loved us first. And because of his love being so great, so wide, so deep, it makes us respond in love to him. And then we have the heart like Joseph in the hour of temptation. I can't do this sin before my God. Because we love him too much to turn against him. His love it drove him to the cross. And our love drives us to live a sanctified life. Jesus is connected with the church. Also, Jesus loved the church. And I have a question. Ask yourself, do I love the church? Jesus loved church. Do I love the church? I hear a lot of people saying a whole lot about what the church is not and what the church, the air and the spots and the wrinkles of the church. But do I love the church? You don't have to be the pastor to love the church. I remember for years, I was at 2801 Hawatha. Years. I think I was there eight years. And I love the church. I love the members. I love the, the motherboard. I love the deacon board. I love uh, the trustee board. I love the Ursher staff. I love, I love everybody in there because they showed me love. Being a street man coming in off the street, I needed love because there's no love in that cold world. But Jesus loves the church. In the book of Revelation, the third, the third chapter, verse 19, Jesus said these words, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. And I love this about the Lord. When, when somebody love you, they will tell you the truth. They will correct you. When a person don't love you, they ain't going to sit there and watch you you know, pride goes before fall. They don't watch you fall. But those who love you will correct you. And so those I love, Jesus said, I rebuke, meaning I correct. I discipline. We got a God that loves us enough to not see us err and fall into things that are wrong. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, he says, being confident of this, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, I love this about the Lord. A lot of people get started doing a lot of great things, but they don't finish it. And we don't have to worry about that with the Lord. What he began in us, he will complete. When he, ta when he taught us and delivered us through his process to stop lying, then we stop lying. Well, we had pride, and we let pride drive us, and the Lord showed us how that pride would get us wrong, we, we start making some changes. Am I the only one in here that have gone through some things? And so Jesus loves the church. He loves the church personally. He loves the church personally. He said, uh, he said um, that, that he, he he said that he gave, in verse number 28, he said that he gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of water with, through the word to present himself a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Ooh-wee. And so, so this is what the Lord did. He did a personal work. He personally worked on us. In Revelation, the first chapter, verse 3, blessed is he who reads out loud the word of this prophecy, and blessed are they who hear it and take heart to what is written in it, because the time is near. And so the Lord is changing us personally because he can come back at any moment. And any, Jesus is coming back for the church, and it can happen at any moment. 
And so therefore, he's washing us. He's, he's, he's changing our hearts from, from an evil heart. Even the anger in, the, in, in 2021 is a vicious anger. That's why you don't want to enter into anger. You don't want to enter into a, a fussing thing. It may go over what you thought it would go. And so Jesus loved the church personally. Then he loves sacrificially. In verse 30, it talks about how he, he gave himself. He said he gave himself. And then he, he, he said that, that, that the same way husbands have to love their wives as their own body, he loves his wife, loves himself. After all, no one hated their own body but fed and cared for the body just as Christ does the church for we are members of his body. And so sacrificially, the Lord loves his church. In 2 Corinthians 11, chapter verse 2, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. I love Paul because the Corinthian church was doing a lot of things wrong. They was fornicating, you know, they was, you know, uh, the son was sleeping with his father's wife. It was all types of division. It was some people full of the devil and the apostle Paul had to turn them over to Satan. I mean, it was so much going on in the Corinthian church, but he was very passionate with a godly passion because he wanted to help them sacrificially. And that's how the Lord is. And that's how we should be toward one another. You know, when people are, are, are out there and they are you know, asking you for money or so on and so forth. We don't have to always think the worst. Sometimes we can't meet a need. And this is Paul, who was the spiritual father of the Corinthian church. And just like a, a pure virgin promised to a husband, Jesus was promised to them. He was the Messiah. And these people in the Corinthian church, they had a whole lot of false influence. Like we have today. We have men with men, women with women. We have to teach and encourage our young people because the culture has shifted in a dark and evil way. And so we have to rid these ideals that's bombarding our children. And this is what the, the Apostle Paul, he was sacrificially working for the Lord and helping present the Corinthian church a, as a pure virgin to him. And so they was in danger of being deceived by these false teachers, but the apostle was sacrificially showing them how the Lord had purged them from their sin. And I'm so grateful that the Lord loves the church. And I have to ask myself, do I love the church? Do I care about the people of God? Or am I so consumed with what Bernard wants, what the pastor feels right now. Even when I come to church, I have to put a check in my heart and make sure that I'm not coming just so I can enjoy Jesus, hallelujah, and, and, and get my praise on. And there's somebody that got a, a whole building on their shoulders. You know, they, they ready to go off the cliff here. But it's my responsibility to come to serve like the Apostle Paul this is the attitude that we must have. We must want to help people get to know and love Jesus. My last point is this. Jesus is patient with the church. And my question to you, are you? My personal question to me, am I patient with the church? Hmm. You know, there's no hurt like a church hurt. But Jesus is patient with the church. When you look down at how uh, the Lord uh, had used the husband as an illustration and how, you know, through his love, he wanted to make the church holy and cleansing her with the washing, with the word, uh, with water through the word and how, you know, the word of God has a way of making you not want to do the things that was an error, you know, before that you were a part of, you know. The Word of God helps us to not want to 
go and participate or go and watch certain things. And the Lord is patient because there's some things we're still in the process that he's helping us get beyond. He's still working with us. And so he's a patient God. And I'm, I'm so grateful that he's patient with me. In the 20th chapter of Acts, verse 28, he says, keep watch over yourselves and the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Then this was the Apostle Paul giving a warning of what is the pastor's priority. And the pastor's job is to spiritually direct the flock. That's his job. You're supposed to be there to tend and to direct the flock. And so he, he said, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock. You know, because the Lord, this, 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 this flock that he's speaking of, the Lord purchased them with his blood. That's why, you know, even when people are in church and some things they're doing, they should know better than that. I'm trying to be real patient. Because we're trying to get people in church, <laughs> not run them out of church. Mm -hmm. You know, but sometimes when you're in, 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 in now you feel, you be like, man, they need to know they they wrong. No, you need to be tender. And this is not easy. And so he, he, he talks about how the shepherd has to be real careful in instructing and directing the flock of God. This is vital, especially in these last days. And I want to say that during this uh, uh, pandemic, you know, people are scattered everywhere. You know, you look for somebody, you don't see them. You see people going down the street that used to be a church. And, and it shows how we have to really be in prayer for people, because some people have long left the path. And, and sometimes the flock scatters. But if, if we really want to be leaders that love God and honor Him and have His will done for our life, we will be in prayer and we will allow the Holy Spirit to give us those promptings to help guide other people where they need to be. In Philippians chapter 1, it's a good verse here. He says, verse 6, being confident of this, that, uh, did I read that all right? No, this is the wrong one. Philippians 4, excuse me. Philippians 4, verse 2. I read 1 and 6 already. He said, I plead with Judea, uh, and I plead with Sinchi to be of the same mind in the Lord. And, and I ask of you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. And so we see here the priority of the shepherd, and now we see how God's continued work of sanctification in his church. He's continually working, washing his church, helping each other. And so we need to have the same thoughts, the same mind in order to continue in the work of the sanctification in God's church. Also, when you think about who we are, we are a servant. We are a servant, and a servant serves for the benefit of others. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, it says, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's people. Then the angel said unto me, Write this, blessed are those who who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these words are the true words of God. 
Man, do you know that there's going to be a time where there's going to be a, 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 a millennial time where we will be with Christ and we will go to the marriage feast of the Lamb? I don't know about you. I want to be there. And so when God is teaching us to stop cussing, stop lying, stop stealing and, and gossiping, and he's getting us ready. We're putting on, we're putting on the fine, fine linen of righteousness. And so we're going to be decked out as God's holy people in this land. And, and so, you know, the one thing about God, he ain't going for no, no sin. The scripture talks about that the soul that sins shall perish. And so, you know, he's a God who is holy and righteous. And so he's preparing us down here now, taking us through the sanctification process as we allow the word of God to wash us and the connection and the fellowship with the Lord and his Holy Spirit helps us, molds us, makes us like Christ, prepares us. Have you ever seen a wife who had, who, I mean, a bride who had took a bath? You ain't seen a, 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 a bride that's gonna put on some dirty stockings? Or slip and ain't washed? But in fact, she's going to have on a brand new slip if she's going to wear one. Everything's going to be first time. And the women will say amen somewhere. Amen. You know, she's going to be prepared. And likewise, you and I are being prepared because the Lord, he has an attitude toward the church. And it's a beautiful attitude. Amen. He has so many precious promises. So many things that he's wanting to do for you and me and things that he's already doing. I'm so glad he's a keeper. I'm so thankful for that. I gave you the acronym SEP. Staying, uh, uh, staying, trusting. Uh, man, I had it with the best up. No, uh, staying, trusting every promise. That's it. That means staying. And I love that, man, when he said, you know, step, stand, trust in every problem. You know, stand and trust in every problem. That's what he means, stand. And, and I was looking at that, and there's so many promises in the scripture. One of them is Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. Who's stretching? Another one is, uh, the Lord promised, he said, in Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 19, I will never leave you, nor forsake you, you know. He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. Yeah. You know, Hebrews 13 talks about verse 5, I will never leave you. No, for it's just so many promises in the law. If God be for us, Romans 8, he's more than the whole world against you. You know, uh, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good. Even tough stuff. One brother said his car was acting up. But he looked at it like this. Maybe God was keeping him from some danger. Right. You know, and so things do have a way of working together for our good. But the Lord's attitude toward his church is a positive attitude. Yeah. Right. And that's why I've learned to not say so many, you know, we can get so uh, uh, sucked into the negative things that is going on with people uh, who are part of the church body. But I try to keep my mind focused on how much the church means to Jesus. Even in watching the Passion of Christ, you saw it. <laughs> you saw his passion. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the church meant something. You know, because when you do what he did, hmm, you go all out. Yeah. And so we can rejoice, like the scriptures, the song said, Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. We can rejoice to that. Because God has a good attitude about you and me. And it's a dedicated attitude of love and steadfast devotion. Man, we ought to give God a hand clap right there. <laughs> Thank God for how much he loves his church. And so let's respond to that love.
by loving each other and, and most of all, loving him supremely. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that your attitude toward the body of Christ, your church, your called out uh, group of members. Uh, Lord, we thank you for how much you love us and you cherish us. And Lord, we just ask that you would give us the right attitude, that we would love you back, and that we would love our neighbor, our brothers and our sisters. You said, you know, that we should especially do good toward the household of God, toward the household of faith. And Lord, I pray that you would just bless our hearts today, that we would have the right attitude, Lord, even when that when our attitude is challenged, even when the relationship has, has grown uh, into a bad patch, a rough patch, we need your help. And we thank you for everything you have done. You. Lord, in sending Jesus to wash us and take away every spot, every wrinkle, everything. Lord, we thank you for that. You. And we ask, Lord, that you would just lead us to be like Jesus was, sacrificial in our love for those who may be in a place where they need to experience a touch of your love from someone that represents you. Help us today, Lord, is my prayer. We thank you, we love you, and it's in your son. Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Lord.